Okay, this is going to be the lead-in video if I can paste it in to the front of what I just uploaded, all those different video clips. So this is the charge controller, the final product. It's uh, the newest one with the newest heat sink on the top. Uh, modification was putting these things out. You'll see in the video at the end. And that was the end product. And the holes are out in front now. So your wires go in here instead of under here. And they're actually solid. So... The first part, like I said, it's a bunch of pictures of the uh, tower, the uh, top plate I produced. I didn't want to purchase one. I'd rather fabricate my own So, because I just uh, didn't think the price point was there. But, you know, supporting all the local people, I bought steel, bought galvanized pipe. I bought all sorts of stuff, welding rods, uh, all equipment, stuff that I needed to make it. So I fabricated a half-inch tilt plate instead of a quarter-inch tilt plate. As you'll see, most guys with towers only have a quarter-inch tilt plate, which is to me is strong, but not strong enough per se. Uh, the guy at the manufacturing of Shelby uh, Mara Towers, yeah, Mara Towers in Shelby, Ohio, told me to my face, goes, that will not hold and the base plate will fail. And I was like, quarter-inch steel base plate's going to fail? And he said, yes. So I took his advice and I went. And uh, said, all right, I'm not going to purchase one from you then. I manufactured one myself, fabricated it here in my yard, welded it up, half-inch steel plate, tilted. It's at the uh, plant right now to get uh, hot dip galvanized. Uh, this whole project's running me uh, roughly 3,000 slash 4,000 plus, I think, right about now. I have to add it all up at the end. Uh, so the tower, I think, was 2,300 or something like that. I forget now, hell. And then, of course, the steel was another few hundred dollars, and then welding, and then the top plate and stainless steel and everything else. So, uh, and then I still have to pour one yard of concrete for the counterbalance weight, uh, 28 by 28 by 6 feet deep. So, and then a foot of stone under that. So, here we are. This is the uh, lead-in video. You'll see all the different little things I did here to make this work, and then when I get the base plate back, I'll... Do another video for Tess Up, Never Buy Tess Up uh, video about the tilt plate and then the tower. Now I have to do a sort of a pulley system on a small gin pole to get the actual tower to rise. I'm trying to make this self-sufficient so if I'm away from home, storms come that are something crazy that I wouldn't be home for, uh, that my wife... Or kids can actually crank it down and lower the tower so and then of course it comes down to the conduit that I have to feed up the 50 foot tower what I'm going to put on there to and I'll take suggestions on that uh, I was thinking the metal conduit going all the way up the 50 foot tower then going into a flex conduit uh, into the actual generator I was going to switch to one I have because I have a PVC box a, a T box coming off there so Instead of having that J-box there, I'm going to basically make that one metal and then uh, go down. Of course, grounding wires going off and sinking rods in the ground. So that's still going to cost more money. So that's about it for now for my thoughts. And uh, I'll come back with more video of the actual product. But uh, like I said, this is the final product for this thing since they sent me a second one. The other one, I haven't modified completely and I haven't uh, taken the things and drilled out the holes and things. It's a little bit of time and energy taking it from that to bringing it to this uh so thank god they do all line up after you put the plastic all the way to the base it just nicely lines up this works a heck of a lot better since all the tightening points are here if they had designed it right the tightening points would have been here and the actual wires in the bottom like most things so but you can work around that it's no big deal so that's about it for now and uh we'll see you when i get the uh, tilt plate back Okay, test up update. This is uh, we're at a stalemate until we get that second controller sent by Tessa. It's it's still being processed or manufactured. Bull crap. You know they just don't have the stuff. Getting it from Turkey, so everything works fine with the turbine. That's good. Three wires all produce power. It goes to the controller. Gives me voltage. Uh, 
goes to the inverter, gets the ground fault saying the uh, PE grounding, 30 volts greater. Switch it back to 110, which is supposed to be a 220 inverter. I switch it back to 110, then it gets low voltage at 114. So, uh, still looking for an inverter out there, man. If anybody knows of one, it can take three phase AC, invert it, put it through the inverter, and back out and grid tie without batteries. So, here's the latest. I went and got the tower uh, out of Shelby, Ohio. And then I made a plate myself, 150 bucks, had them plasma cut the whole thing. So looks pretty nice. Uh, then I welded on, galvanized, two inch pipe over there, inch and a half. And now I have to drill the holes for here for the bolt holes. They already have bolt patterns for nine sixteenth bolts or five eighths, I think they are, something like that. So anyway, and then I got two 6,500 pound clevises on here to basically for my guide wires. I only have be able to do two. So I'm gonna do them out on two different angles uh, towards the sides. And I took stainless steel bolts uh, they had left over for my solar uh, panel install and put those on and now I can mount my plate back on there and put the generator on there with spacers so the plate actually holds plate to plate so I'll show you that after I've got it on there on the deck 50 feet worth still got to bury one square yard of concrete down there for the counterweight Okay, this is a Tessup wind turbine update. Finally, the second charge controller is being shipped by DHL. It's supposed to be here this week. That took about almost a month. So, here's the update. Everything's still the same with this. Still works. Three phase works, the whole nine yards. Waiting on that inverter charge controller. See if I get the same PE abnormal. So, in the meanwhile, I ordered my tower. I fabricated a top plate with the uh, stainless, here's the front of it, makes it look even. Uh, so two inch pipe drilled for their holes that are in top of the post, quarter inch plating. I'm taking it today to drop off, get galvanized. So it's gonna be hot dip galvanized. The manufacturer said the tilt plate would fail, the quarter inch ones they sell. So I went out and got half inch plate, 25 by 25 half inch uh, bar stock and then I made the tilt plate itself with the hinges uh, solid bar instead of tube I went with solid bar welded those beveled the bottom so they're really small and then continues to I think the five passes of welds to bring it back out to the size of it so everything looks good everything's welded everything's within the tolerance I need for the hinges and everything so that fits in there nicely and I got three quarter inch case hardened bolts number eights for the uh, bolts these I went with five eighths case hardened on the outside there's four of them I figured that's probably enough to hold the thing down in case anything goes uh, everything's double welded on both sides base cuts on the metal so it's it's solid so that's about it for now I'm gonna take it and get it galvanized and I'll uh, show you when I get it back okay this is a continuation with the test up they just sent me a new charge controller and after you 
see what happens, you're going to laugh as much as I did. They are complete retards, and I cannot believe they actually sent another one from First to Turkey. Uh, the dirt merchants there, I don't even think they test these things. They do certain things, but they don't check through. So anyway, I'm starting off with my generator here, the three phase. I've done each leg already. I'm just giving you a show. Hand spin, 34 volts. You know, beep, this beeps at 30, so anything over 30 volts is going to beep. 35, 34. So each phase works. So now I'm going to fade out for a second, put the three phases up to here. But I guarantee you when I fix, put two on here, because I've already done this before testing, uh, it's laughable because put it on a continuity test. So I checked all these to see if any of these were ground. Whoop. Yeah, see, this one's grounding out to a ground. That one isn't, this one is. So that will lock up the, the rotor, the uh, turbine. See? So this I thought was joking because last time it was just this one, same thing. This line, not a problem. This side, it shorts out. They use these cheap connectors in here. It's just incredible. I'm not going to tell Tessa if that is shorty. You know, I'm just going to take this connector apart because it stinks. What happens is these two uh, machine thread bolts go in here to a plastic uh, piece that's here and the nut is so tight in between I guess when they tighten this it sh presses it through the plastic enough to make a connection and I'm not hitting the wall so it's not that it's like playing that doctor game with a little bone so these work good uh, same thing and this is grounded also it's gonna things these two are not but this one is this one right here is the only one, and here it is. That's not, it's good on that side, but the plastic in between, that's what it hits. So, shorts out. So, I'm gonna hook up the turbine uh, to it real quick to see which one it's locking up on. Because right now it spins freely, just like that, as it always has, uh, until this thing locks it up. So, my original one had the same thing. That was shorted out between this and this positive contact. So, you have a ground, and a, this is the positive side for the batteries. That's DC output, and it was short. So it's got to shorten this thing. This is brand new, straight out of the box. I haven't done anything to it. So uh, let me fade out. I'll hook this up and come back. Okay, I'm back again, fading in here. As I said before, the continuity test showed that this is shorted, and this one is shorted to the thing. So you should have a short between any of these and the uh, ground of the box. It's on inverter. The brake is definitely off. It's on max voltage. And now, since I've hooked up a second one, as soon as you hook up a second one, the turbine is locking up the magnets. So it won't spin because of the short. Once I take one of them away, then you don't have that short back, so it should spin freely. But once you go and hook another one up, that shows you there's a short in the uh, battery controller. So, as I put the second one in, and these retards and Tessa always asks you, oh, your connection's tight, the uh, voltage, you know, yeah, whatever, dudes. So, this is bouncing up to 20 volts, you know, that's about it, 10, 10 to 20, that's it, but uh, it's locked up, so I'll go back, I'll isolate these things so they don't have a short in them, take the box apart, and it's just a cheesy box they made, they put the newer burns in there, but these are just self-tapping screws, take them off cheesy made but uh, anyway I'll do that and then I'll fade back in after I get these isolated to show you that it spins freely okay okay to all the people there Tessa slash all the people in Bursa Turkey that make these things Merit your company sucks as you know it does and your products really suck so uh, no offense to you but it sucks no one does quality control and no one checks jack shit for you so just spent another wasted another month of my fucking time excuse the language or the french because you dipshits fucking didn't check anything so here we go you got two things here so any of these cannot be connected together that's called a short all right so anybody who doesn't know what a short is look it up especially uh nurse up since he doesn't know how to uh describe anything that's in there i'm going to touch the 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 uh mounting bolt nothing there nothing there now watch this one in the middle which shorts out all three makes the turbine lock up so there's the middle I'll try to hold this thing back for you 
So there you go. We're going to the middle one. You hear that? That's continuity. And no, it's not touching the side of the thermal. The thing's right in the dead center. Here we go. Ready? Dead center for all you doubters. See that? That's to the ground of the case. So this shit piece of crap that you're installing in here is shorting out to the box. Again, this thing, look how loose this thing is. And that's shipped from you. Just got this out of the box. So right here, dead center one there. Guess what? Here we go. Ready? Keep that over there. Can't even put much pressure on it because it's so loose in the shipping. Touch this. Look at that. See? That's called a short. So there's a short, and that's the positive side of the battery for the DC. Total shit, man. Total shit. So I don't even know what to say to you guys anymore. This is the uh, back side of the charge controller. So the uh, Numb nuts drove these home so far. He spun them past the uh, threads, so I had to pry the plate as I undid this. So this is the back side of this. Uh, nothing's really changed from the last one I had, which is just a few months ago. So they put the uh, bolt, as you can see, they put one bolt to hold the resistor, uh, you know, like heat sink or whatever you want to call it, on here against the back heat sink plate the aluminum but the other two are not bolted to it or screwed to it and I think the manufacturer actually had it set up where you put two machine threads nuts or scoot two machine thread bolts through those holes so you'd actually put it to the sink plate these guys decided to cut a piece out of the back plate and then just put these there and then bolt one there and these are somewhat touching there so anyway that's that part this is the cheap part we're getting to so these things uh they're not touching the wires so i don't think that's proximity shorting but this one right here so let's see which one this is the positive on the battery so it's the outside one so this one right here is shorting with that nut and like i said those nuts go into the plastic wall right inside there and I think they're touching the contactors inside that that's where you're getting the short that's the only contact point because the box is there this isn't touching anything it's just on that lousy bolt and nut so and it's just you know that's the way they stripped it loose they just screw these things down it goes in it's, it's horrible so uh, if they actually used a phenolic block type thing a little bit more high quality one uh, these one of these bolts I forget which one it was on the uh, three phase it's also locking up so one of these is and i got the feeling this one's so crushed into the plastic here compared to the other one it's probably this one's probably punched through the wall which it looks like it's pretty tight to that side so anyway i have to isolate those and then put the box back together uh to make this thing work it's about it for now so uh i'll fade out i'll splice this in and uh show you what i did after i'm done okay back out again with the box so uh just took the uh, bolts off isolated them popped the nuts out of there from the backing these uh bolts i also cut the bolt back down to what size it should be not super long it extended out like an inch and something past the uh the brackets not too sure if it was hitting a wire or whatever but uh anyway short nose took all the nuts and bolts out so once it's isolated like this uh there's no short to the box or anywhere inside the turbine spins freely just by a hand spin you can see right there it's like 20 something Give it a little more push 45 drops down slow as it goes so plenty of voltage uh and the turbine spins freely even on if i switch it over to battery still spins freely does the same thing there's no uh binding of the turbine and the magnets so that takes care of the short problem out of here uh of course this is also isolated off there too so now it's not shorted so i'm going to Put this back together i'm going to probably put some spacers uh between the bolts and the uh their back side of the nuts i should say and these uh blocks to make sure it doesn't short out and then uh then i should have a good charge controller but then we'll be spinning it up with the leaf blower to see what kind of code we get if we get the pe abnormal or just low voltage because <coughs> grow watt has already told me in their emails this inverter and this is the 
uh, MIC 2000 TL X. It's 50 to 500 volt DC, and they told me directly to my face via email this inverter is not made for a wind turbine. The software or the hardware is not designed for it and will not work with a wind turbine. So, next step is to get test up the semi actual inverter that works with a wind turbine. I wish somebody out there who knew the person who has that SkyMax three phase AC right to the inverter and then switches to DC, then goes through DC and switches it back to AC right there and it directly connects to the grid to the panel uh missouri wind and solar did a video on it skymax about seven years ago and i don't care if us ul is listed or not i'd like to get a hand of one anybody knows any information please send it to me i really need to do this and get one of these grid tied i don't want to do a battery bank with my situation here so uh if you would give me a shout out and uh give me some info if anybody knows so like once again, never buy Tessa. It's total junk. It's a shit company. They uh, they have a good base product. I mean, I, I do like the damn design and everything. I don't know how much wind's going to have to be cranking because I had my wind blower, leaf blower going pretty much at max, spinning this thing like crazy. And I think it got up to 114 volts in there, and it says voltage out of range, of course, because it's not 120 or close. It's just not close enough to 120 to kick on the inverter to feed the grid. So. We're going to try again today and uh, see what happens, but that's about it. Never buy Tessup. Short video for Tessup. I isolated. This is your brand new controller. Shit. You know, I think the thing would be working. Anyway, isolated this so these are not grounded out. Isolated my DC. Already tested this. Goes up to 40 you know, volts and kicks on with a spin. Now I've got it on the DC side positive negative as it's mounted and uh we'll give it a shot here that's 47 it's about what it's going on gauge 50 so yep right about 50 yep so that's working the output's working that part is working i just have to isolate these without shorting them out the way you sent it to me so then we'll be on to the inverter again and then we'll see what this thing gets for a reading Okay, fitting back in, never buy Tessup. So, both connectors are isolated. The turbine actually spins freely, so you don't have to worry about it binding on the magnets. The voltage is popping right up, so they spin it. I just spun it really quick uh, with the blower, came in. They said, you know, no AC connection because I didn't have the AC hooked up. Now I got the AC. Now I have this, it's only a three leg, and I'm still confused on how this, you know, I'm gonna call them for this this says nominal output on the side here nominal output voltage 230 volts AC All right nothing about single phase uh, 120 this is only hooked up to one phase uh, because there's only three legs there's a ground and there's a load in the a load in the uh, common so the common is actually going to a common bar the hot, of course, is going to the low, is going to the 110 side of the circuit breaker, and the ground is going to the grounding bar, which is an isolated panel. So, up here. If I hook this up as a 220 hookup, this gives me the PE abnormal because it's saying the voltage difference between the common and the ground is exceeding 30 volts. And of course, it will because it's 120 and zero. So, that's the dilemma. This is not made for a wind turbine. That is probably why it's doing it. So Tessa has to send another one that's actually made for a wind turbine. So, all right, so here we go. We're gonna hit this with the wind uh, leaf blower and spin it up, put it on its max. So it goes to about 70 volts. Good. Seconds. AC voltage out of range. 
faster. Come on. Put the turbo on there. Push it. AC voltage out of range. That's all I get. That's how fast that thing's spinning. So, that thing is moving around very, very fast. You can't see in the video. Out of range. So as you can see, the, the turbine was spinning extremely fast. That would be like crazy winds here. 70 volts. Uh, I didn't look at it once you put it on. Put it on turbo again and put it on there. Go. Max. Let's push over 100 volts. AC power. So it's still saying even with a hundred plus volts coming out of here, which is basically what it's pumping out from there, coming to here, it says it's out of range. So I'm going to switch this to the 220 hookup, and then I'm going to get the PE fault. I guarantee it. So all right, we'll fade out here and come back. Never buy Tesla. Quick video for you, Merritt. These are both isolated. They're not shorted out on the box somehow with the bolts. So now the turbine spins freely. I'm gonna bring it up on the voltage, probably 70 or 80, and I'll show you what the code says. Hit it on, go. update for you merit these are isolated no short turbine spins freely by hand we're going to spin it up to the voltage and show you the code it gets still with the brand new controller go ahead go As you see, PE abnormal, there's your new controller. It's not the controller, it's the inverter. It's not made for wind turbines. Here's the second shot of this, and it's all hooked up the same way, hooked over. Now this input is now only 110 volts input instead of the 230, which gives you the PE abnormal. So now this controller again is not made, inverter is not made for a wind turbine. Now it's back to 120. This says nominal output is 230, which is not with the three three line, three wire hookup. All right, go ahead, hit it. Go 
different ranges of voltage and not once would the inverter kick in and actually go to the grid okay never buy test up anyway merit here is the block that hole is designed for mounting you do not mount a bolt through that square and then suck down a nut into that area just to mount it so I'm modifying the box because I have to to make it right because I can't do it crappy way like the dirt merchants do there. So as you can see, if they had made four holes in the same spot and mounted it like that, bolt there, and then centered these for the lines coming in, all right, and then lines on the back side would still be facing out this way. So. That's the way it's supposed to be mounted, not the way you guys did or the dirt merchants did down there in Turkey. You can't mount it that way through there. That's why I was pulling that nut and touching the sidewall right in here, basically shorting it out. So pay attention, change your manufacturing. I'm telling you all this shit for your own reason because nowhere on the web does anybody say anything positive about Tessa at all any of this junk you guys sell or you goddamn you chicken shits cowards i'd say you guys have all your comments turned off on your videos it would be all negative i guarantee you that but you would actually learn from something from all the input you would get and the people around the world would be able to communicate through a central point to get this crap to work and everybody would have their own ideas especially engineers that are actual electrical engineers and everybody else i don't believe you guys are i know you're not especially when you put together something like this so get a grip man get your manufacturing in, in line with something that works uh and not much more i can say about this crap okay fading in here starting to lose my daylight out here working on this bench uh, modification for this block they mount it through that square. They pull the nut down in that little square, and that's where it pinches and touches the wall of the connectors and shorts it out. So that is the manufacturer's mounting point. That is the circle. That is where the bolts are supposed to go through. So what I did was modify the box a little bit. So when you do it, you just basically line those up. It's tough because it's light tin. Uh, just basically aviation cutters snip it file it put it in there i cut the bolt uh the actual size you need is about one inch from the neck right there from the bottom of the head in so one inch and then that also allows the holes to line up so it's dark now of course uh, you can't see in there a little bit but anyway it lines up and that's the way it's going and then you just make sure because i had to disconnect the wires the if you had left it connected the uh, positive would be on the wrong side so uh, just make sure when you do that, make sure the positive and the negative go back to the ones on the board. They're clearly marked on the board, positive and negative on the, on the connector. So, uh, just keep in mind that. And if you take all the wires off, make sure you take photo. So now I've just got to clean those up and then put the, uh, three-way connector in there. So there's no way it's going to short out the way it's supposed to be properly used with the actual mounting hole in this block, not the way Tessa did it. Okay, this will be fading from the last video. Uh, after I did all the work, I really didn't get a, too good of a thing there for you. So I'm going to show you this a little up close. This is the newest box they sent me that I had to modify. So as you can see, all those align where you put your three phase in. They had it where you had them coming in the bottom. So like I said, modification. Take a file and everything. Uh, cut these holes out. File them and make it fit right same thing with the battery one like i said uh, just be careful because 
when I did do it, it turned around the wires for the uh, positive and negative. So, but otherwise, all the holes line up in there. Let's turn this thing deal down. Do it. Uh, so you can get the wires in the front, not on the bottom. These little plastic sleeves will actually stick out, and they stick out nicely. And this is secured through the circle on that block, which makes it rock solid. You can't move these, twist them any way you want. This is the old box right here. I got the two of them by side by side. This is the original. And yeah, there was a short in there. I had to do something to one of the screws there. I put some uh, spacers there to pull it away from there. This one's still canted because it sucks. <laughs> Test up products. Anyway, that's where they're pulling it through the squares. That's still that way. I didn't modify this one at all. I just made sure the uh, nut was not crushed through the plastic and it stayed that way. So this is the one I'm going with. Uh, I may modify this one, the modify the second box later to have them sticking out the right way since I figured that out and got the bolts and everything there for it. So I might modify it to make it correct. Uh, so that's it for this one. And this is all set, ready to go. This does work and it's got the new heat uh dischargers there dissipation for the uh overload for battery setup i bought mine for the grid setup and of course it doesn't work with the grid this is what they had on the last one as you can see there's just little wires in there that i guess tungsten spun spools to heat up heating coils this looks a little more hardy i guess that's the newest ones where there's a barrel and it's got a whole bunch of poked out edges and stuff so for resistors to burn off the energy so that's about it for tonight. I'm going to post this to YouTube, and I'm going to try to do a lead-in video to explain everything that I've put out here so far. Now it's just on waiting on Tessup to reply to my uh, damaging email to them about their misinformation, disinformation about how they have a wind turbine to a charge controller to an inverter to the grid. They don't have a uh, grid-tied inverter that's UL-approved and they don't mention that in their advertising so they're falsely advertising a system that doesn't work so i'm hoping for a delta series inverter something that's grid tied that can actually handle this and do it that's what i heard from one of the persons out there on the youtube so anybody out there on youtube please let me know if you know of an inverter anywhere made that can do that wind inverter and directly to the grid without batteries all right, I'm going to fade out here, and uh, I'll continue back when I get my base plate, my tilt plate back from the galvanization uh, plant up there in Amboy's. I guess it's South Amboy, New Jersey. So, all right then, we'll see you later.